There has been, without question, no playoff bracket in 2020 that has been as dramatic as the 5A Boys Championship Bracket. Tonight, that championship bracket comes to a close. It's the 2020 GHSA 5A Boys Basketball State Championship, where tonight, the Jaguars of Cedar Shoals meet the Bulldogs of Dutchtown. And hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us right back here on the NFHS Network, your home for the GHSA Basketball State Championships once again in 2020. And once again, back alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Hanover, me, the man losing his voice, I'm Chris Mooneyham. Well, the 5A classification and the playoffs therein, Justin, have been incredibly dramatic. Both of these teams with tremendous runs, they both have hit ultra-dramatic last-minute, last-second game-winning shots throughout the playoffs. Let's start with the visitors tonight, Cedar Shoals. Well, let's first say that in the last five games with these teams, four have gone overtime. Yes. There's been numerous comebacks. It's absolutely incredible what we're going to see tonight. Cedar Shoals, Quincy Canny. I know Tyler hit that game-winning shot, the incredible shot, right. but Quincy Canny is the guy. He's the Region 8 Player of the Year. He hit six threes to help his team that had no offense against South DeKalb come back in that game, had 27 points in all on those six threes. In the quarterfinals, 13 points, 12 rebounds. He does it all. He can be a beast in the paint, and he can bomb away from the outside. Cedar Shoals, the number eight-ranked team in the state of Georgia at 28-3. and three. They won an absolute classic in the quarterfinal and a pretty good ball game in the semifinal as well. Justin was there. He'll tell you more yeah. about it. And we've got highlights of how that game ended uh, coming up a little later during the broadcast. Meanwhile, for the Dutchtown Bulldogs, number two in the state of Georgia, uh, they've won four straight. They come into the ball game at 27 and four overall. This is quite the club. Yeah, real well-rounded team, and they've got three Camerons in the starting lineup. Who else can boast that? They're all great, but we're not even going to feature them. We're going to look at your main man, future Gardner Webb commit, absolute stud. 23 and a half points in the last two games, 13 rebounds a game. You see his average there, right around 18 points per contest. He is the glue that makes his team go. His field goal percentage, 59 percent. He can do it all. He actually fouled out late in that last game, and they they took care of business for their senior. They actually won it for Man. So now Man's going to bring that expertise here today and do what he does and look for a title for these Bulldogs. Cedar Shoals has a little bit of history on the other side. They have a little bit of basketball history, but no Athens boys high school team has won a state championship in the modern era. In fact, no Athens high school has won a state title since 1941. Dutchtown has never won a state championship, so somebody's going to win their first championship tonight and set a little bit of history, and it'll be a memorable, memorable run. Let's take a look at the keys to the ball game for each club. Yeah, real quickly, fight until the end. That's been the motto. They just don't quit. They keep coming back, get Canny going. He'll knock down threes. Dutchtown, a tough physical team. Be who we are. We're in the finals. We're ranked two by many publications. Constant pressure on both ends. Offensive, defense, attack, attack, attack. Dutchtown will be the visiting team designated for the ball. I'm sorry, Cedar Shoals will be the designated team to be the visitors in the ball game. Let's meet their starting lineups. Again, for Cedar Shoals and the Jaguars, it's McIntosh, Johnson, Williams, Canty, and Willingham, their starting five.
Again for Dutchtown, they're starting five. Anderson, Hobbs, Bryant, Mann, and Callahan. Cedar Shoals, led by Drico Thomas. Is Drico on the screen there? Hold on a second now. Where is he? Where is Coach? Yeah, there he is. Drico Thomas wrapping up his 10th year at the helm of the Athens program, 197 wins. Meanwhile, for Dutchtown, there he is. He's hiding from the camera. He's not a shy guy. <laughs> He's very focused and very ready to win a state title. Jordan Griffith is an amazing story. He's in his first season at the helm of Dutchtown, but this is his first season as a high school head coach. He spent one season as a JV head coach in Tennessee, two as an AAU head coach, but this is his first ever high school head coaching job. A remarkable story. I'd say he's done pretty well. Not too bad. Here we go. Cedar Shoals in the blue and orange. A couple of teams that many would have thought would not be here, and especially if they watch their games. Cedar Shoals was in the second tier of contenders entering the postseason. Dutchtown was in that top tier of contenders, maybe at the bottom of it, although a lot of people had higher hopes for them than some. A runner goes off glass and in, and the opening score of the ball game belongs to Tyler Johnson, the man who hit the, uh, the now famous three ball winner in quadruple overtime in the state semifinals against Southwest DeKalb. A ball game that Justin Hanover was lucky enough to call and one of the great games you've ever seen, yeah, right? No, absolutely. An instant classic. Went four overtimes. They drove the lane at the end. I thought we were destined for a fifth overtime. The shot was blocked. I figured, okay, it's going to end with South DeKalb winning by two. They kicked it out to Tyler and the rest was history. What an amazing, amazing night in Fort Valley. Both of these teams have historic, memorable, last-second playoff winning shots. Man slips, able to get off the pass before he's hit with a travel or loses possession, and will head back the other way. Dutchtown did the same thing. Yeah, Dutchtown went to overtime as well with, against Kell, and both the losers on that night, Southwest DeKalb and Kell, led for the majority of the game, led, I believe, both by double digits at some point in the second half. And it's just amazing, if you watch those games, that we have a Cedar shoals Dutchtown matchup. It didn't feel like that's how it would turn out if you looked at the pace of those games. That ended up being a ho-hum six-point victory <laughs> for Dutchtown. They're true dramatic ball games. Well, three, really. Sweet yeah. 16 quarterfinals. Yeah. But the quarterfinal victory, the Cam Bryant shot. He knocked down a running buzzer beater from probably, oh, I don't know, 25 feet out. A 73-72 victory in overtime at home. Just an electrifying play. So both of these teams, one in the quarterfinals, one in the semifinals, knocked down historic for their program, historic all-time shots and two of the highlight reel-type moments in the 5A tournament this year. And they did it, the, the, they beat Riverwood by four in the round of 16 without Brian, who was suspended from that game. So there's been adversity as well, and then I'm sure you want to get to Cedar Shoals, their road here, which was even more difficult. Yeah, Cedar Shoals squeaked out a two-point overtime victory in the Sweet 16 against Wayne County, and then trailed Lithonia by eight in the fourth quarter before getting a three for the lead with just 24 seconds remaining. That one won't fall. The semifinal topped them all, though. That was the game that you got to call, the Tyler yeah. Johnson shot. And we're going to throw up the highlight here in a little while. Some point, hopefully, in this first quarter so you can get a look at it. Just a, just a wild, wild play that put Cedar Shoals in this championship game. And that Lithonia game, they just they trailed 30 of 32 minutes, the Jaguars did. They did not play well. And Colbert said after the game, we just didn't want to end like that. A bad game here at home. I mean, that's how this great season could have ended suddenly. Down low, layup is in, and we are tied at two. That was Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Man, not Jermaine, Jermaine Man, six foot five, the senior, 19 points per ball game, eight rebounds, transferred into the program, Stars Mill in the offseason. He was an absolute beast in that semifinal. 10 in the first half, 16 overall, then he fouled out, and you figure, oh no, they may be in trouble. And the rest of those guys, Cameron Trio, gutted it out. Stepped up, didn't they? Yes, they did. Three ball falling away this time. 
for Quincy Canty will not fall. And the push. Off glass, beautiful. And tremendous body control from Jalen Anderson, the senior at six foot one, who gives his team six and a half points per ball game. Real nice move. Phenomenal balance. McIntosh gives off to Isaiah Sanchez, who's checked into the ball game. No, no, I beg your pardon. That was Tyler Johnson. Three and not five. Also a USC Aiken commit. He'll be joining his buddy Quincy Canny there. Familiarity in the next level. Sure. Jumper falling in. Jaden Williams can't get it to fall. The senior guard ends up in the hands of Johnson. Tyler Johnson not only hit that famous shot in the semifinal, but he had 15 points, nine rebounds, and three assists in the ball game as well. Be at the NCAA Georgia Top 100 camp. Also one of the top 50 players in Georgia's 2020 class. He's a senior at six foot one. Could be a guard or a forward at the next level. They'll figure that out when he gets there. Cameron Callahan is headed to the line. Fouls now even team-wise at 2-2. Score at 4-4. Cameron Callahan, six points per ball game. Gets his team a steal and a half. Junior guard at five foot ten. Anderson had ten points. Uh, Callahan, I beg your pardon. Uh, he knocks down the second. Five four. Johnson with a good move, kick out, three ball. Williams, no good. Rebound pulled away by Canty. He'll do that, had eight rebounds in the semifinal. Now drive, dish, defender in the air, lay it up and in. Raquel Willingham, the senior, the forward at six foot three. Great decision, that showed some yeah, basketball yeah. savvy. Big time decision. Raquel held scoreless in that last game. On the board here early on. Cam Hobbs. Puts up his first attempt of the ball game and comes up empty. Hobbs, 13 and a half points per ball game. He's emerged as the other Cam, they call him. He's emerged as a tremendous yes. three-point shooter. Yes, he's, he's made the big three, and they call him the other Cam. Drive. Johnson, foul. Your officials, David Jenkins, Willie Crosby, and... Mark Couch calling that one. Mark Couch, a veteran of Georgia high school basketball. He's been doing these games for years and years. First one on the way in good for Tyler Johnson. Johnson at three points in the ball game. Five points in the ball game, I beg your pardon. Make it six. Gary Richardson with the handle. He's just checked into the ball game for Dutchtown during that last dead ball. Bryant over to Anderson. Anderson going to decide to drive. Mr. Anderson going to pass off to Cameron Callahan. Jumper. Will not fall. Ball in the air. Battle for the rebound. Caught. Put up. Second effort up and in. Jalen Anderson comes flying in. Zero on his back. Taps it up and in. Big offensive board work by Anderson. Four points in the affair now for Jalen. Cedar Shoals willing to work out of the half court. Meanwhile, defensively for Dutchtown, they're going to pressure the ball. Want to keep everything sideline to baseline. No middle drives. Working the boards right here. Getting up and putting it in. Love that angle from behind the basket. It's the hustle points. Physicality in the paint. Winning it back for a deuce. 
Jerdavian Colbert has checked in for Cedar Shoals. Big time player off the bench. Yeah. Two in blue. Eight big late points in that last game. That semifinal? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. 10 8, Cedar Shoals. Good, clean, crisp basketball in this title game. Chance at a three-point play as Jermaine Mann is headed to the line. It's been a good start for both of these teams, both offensively and defensively. Agree? Yeah, both teams sort of hustling, working, doing their thing as we take another look. Jermaine Mann, little spin move in the lane. They wanted the travel, did the Jaguars, but not going to get it. It's not jagged. We don't have a lot of errant passes, bad shots, things of that nature, turnovers. It is a championship. These, these teams should be well-oiled machines at this point, and looks like they are. Yeah, but you know on the other side sure. of that, sometimes... Little nerves. We'll get, yeah. Only three turnovers total in the ball game. Well, well there you go. Yeah, well. The broadcaster's broad jinx, you indeed, like to call it? Indeed. Yep. Make it four. Here comes Cam Bryant. So hard to defend is Bryant. He's good, athletic, quick, but he's also so big. Oh, the rejection at close range. Jalen Jackson for Cedar Shoals comes up with a rejection. Number 21, Bryant, give off to Anderson. Anderson works around to Callahan. Now a three-pointer goes. Cam Bryant, 15.6 points per ball game, five assists, six rebounds, 30% from beyond the arc. Got teams like Xavier and Murray State and Virginia Tech and Texas, among others, looking for his services. Trapped on baseline. Rejection by Bryant. Another opportunity at it, and it goes. Kashik Brown, the sophomore. Another guy who came up huge late in that game. Six monster points, helping to force overtime. They were down four with a minute to go off of a freak three-pointer from midcourt. And this team responded like they've done all year. And guys like Kashik Brown have stepped up. Corner three is long. He'll drive and dish. Three ball no good. Caught inside. Turnaround shot is good. Jordavian Colbert in that semifinal versus Southwest DeKalb. 15 points, 10 rebounds. And here in the championship game, he's tied it at 14 apiece. And he had one point in the first half. When the chips were down, Colbert took over. Oh, great look. Great look from Cam Bryant to Jermaine Mann. Final half minute. Brown, Kashik gives off to Johnson. This is Tyler. Tyler going to try to take his man. Got sealed out for a moment. Now got stripped on the way up. They got three seconds. Still got time. Gary Richardson off to Bryant. Not in time. Oh, baby, if Cam knew how much time was left, he'd have thrown up a floater, no doubt. But that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Bulldogs lead Jaguars by two on the network. Back at the 2020 GHSA 5A Boys State Championship, this was the scene at the semifinals at Fort Valley last week. Looking for a fifth overtime. The defense doesn't stink. Final second. If Justin it goes, Hanover oh no! with the call of his life. They did it. Cedar Walk Shoals us through it, has Justin. done it. It was sheer exhilaration for this team. It looked like they were done. They missed oh, that initial baby, shot. Oh, baby, are you kidding ago. me? The shot was blocked. Somehow the ball fell into their hands. They then pushed Tyler Johnson in. You saw it right there. Only had it on his fingertips. Couldn't even bring it in. Right. And he just floated it up there in. And the miracle was answered as it's been done the last few rounds.
What an amazing, amazing game. Four overtimes. I'm almost speechless thinking about it. Just amazing. Well, I'm glad you got to call it, my friend. You had the second day at Fort Valley. Yes. I'm not at all jealous that I was there the first day and did not get a game like that. I'm not jealous at all. Not well, even you one know, bit. It's, it's karma, though. You know what I mean? I, I deserve right? things like that. Oh, oh, okay. Good thing I'm not jealous at all. Three ball off the iron and no good for Jermaine Mann. No, in all seriousness now, of course, I'm so very happy for you, my good friend. You have, in fact, now called two of the most famous shots in Georgia high school, high school basketball in the last two years you have. One right here, yeah. You're very, very lucky. That's so great. Both game-winning, buzzer-beating shots. And as you said, one right here to win the state title last year. Is that the 5A classification? 2A. Demarcus Johnson, no. That ah, was... Yeah. Tri-Cities. Yeah. 6A. 6. Tri-Cities and Tucker. That's it. 45-42, low-scoring affair. Tied at 42 final seconds. Demarcus Johnson, the inbound. Shoots it from 25-26. <laughs> Lights go out. Yep. Hapeville and all the neighborhoods surrounding were just partying till the end of the night. Three misses and three rebounds. Bryant leaks out and dunks. Cam Bryant with the jam. Bryant now five points on the evening. Second quarter, 2020 GHSA boys basketball state championship. A fall away and a foul. Quincy Canty is headed to the line. Canty. First, let's take a look at the dunk. Oh, love the angle again. You see it from behind. Rims rocking. Quincy Canty had the go-ahead three-pointer for his club. 21 points in the quarterfinal versus Lithonia. Region player of the year. Six foot six senior. Hits the first. When he gets going, it's, it's almost unstoppable. He did that in that last game, Chris. He only had five at the break, and then suddenly in the third quarter, he had three threes, 12 in all in that quarter. Then he had two more threes after that. You could just really see that rhythm kicking in. Quincy now to four points in the ball game. One made field goal with his two made free throws. Richardson gave off to Bryant. Bryant tries for the dump down to Mann. Mann then ends up working it around to Isaiah Pluseed. And in the end, yeah, Pluseed with a almost there as we go back the other way now with Mann. Five forty mark. Four point ball game. Man, off iron, no good. A plus seed saying that he was in fact not the last man to touch it. We'll head back the other way just the same. Cedar Shoals trying to bring a championship home to Athens. Jaguars campus east of Athens, not too far from Lexington Road. The Athens perimeter, if you know it. Big rebound, big offensive rebound, put off the glass. That one won't fall. No Athens boys high school team has won a state championship in what's kind of defined as the modern era, 1973 to the present day. 1941, Athens High School won the Class B title. That doesn't really count. Winterville High School won a state championship 39 to 53. They won three of them. Look at that shot. Beautiful so shot. Isaiah Plusseed. Plus seed, I beg your pardon. Timeout called on the floor. You know, Dutchtown, by the way, opened up the season 
against a team we'll see tomorrow night. They opened up at Wheeler this year. Lost that one 63-53, then won nine straight after that. But you talk about a litmus test early on. Maybe you didn't know if Wheeler was that good yet, but it's still Wheeler. Yep. It's, it's sort of the MO these days of these programs. Go out of state, play yep. the toughest of the tough, battle tested. That seems to be the real, the new way to do things. I don't yep. care if we lose, just be battle tested. Yep. Get you ready for the postseason where you'll face all the best teams. It's been a dream season for those gentlemen, Dutchtown. A year of firsts. First appearance in a state title game in program history. Highest win total in single season history for Dutchtown. Most region wins in a single season. Program like so many in the state of Georgia born around the turn of the century. 04 to be precise. Seventh postseason appearance since 2010. And in the previous two years, they were a quarter finalist. Drive. Kick out. Raquel Willingham. No, no, Kashik Brown, I beg your pardon. Work around, off glass. Will not fall for Jalen Jackson. Here comes Dutchtown. And Elio Bobar! Cam Bryant, welcome to the National Highlight Reels. He almost lifted the lid off this joint. That ball's going to fall. How about that shot? They needed that. Now within half a dozen, but this thing started to get away from them a little bit here early on. Jalen Jackson to six points in the ball game brings his team back to within six. Oh, my. Still not over that Bryant dunk. Rising in the air and coming down with a tomahawk jump, jam. Well over the rim. See how high over the rim he was. Yes, bring it down, big fella. That's impressive. Jadavian Colbert, sophomore, five foot eight. Dump down. Got a defensive trailing. Kick it out for a three. Got it. Quincy Canny has knocked down the three, and we're back to a three-point ball game. You knew Cedar Shoals was not going to go no. away tonight. That's a response to that dunk, the quick 5-0 run. Now the chant of defense behind us. Bryant in and out. And the rebound pulled away by Colbert. They're going to push. Watch for a potential. He's going to say a blow by defender. Turn into a three ball attempt. Kashik Brown. Off to Colbert. Colbert work around another three. Not this time. Ball in the air. Loose ball taken away. By Dutchtown. Three ball straight away. Back iron no good in the air, and it's pulled away by Brown. The big rebound. Walk. Canty hit on the travel. 2-12 mark, second quarter. We're going back the other way. Foul situation, if you're wondering, six. Committed by Dutchtown, three by Cedar Shoals. We've had ourselves a pretty clean ball game. Pretty clean yeah, ball game. We really have. Driving dish, three ball. Not this time. Still on the tur on the ground. Bodies all over the place. And a timeout called by Jordan Griffin and the Dutchtown Bulldogs. While they had possession, even if it was for a scant moment. Jordan Griffin's five principles of success. Appreciation, enthusiasm, competitiveness, accountability, and unselfishness. He said that helps us not only on the court, but in life. And you see him right there preaching to his team. Appreciation, enthusiasm, competitiveness, accountability, and unselfishness. So much of this stuff is not necessarily about basketball. It's molding oh. these young men not only to be great players on the court, but also in the classroom and for life. And he knows it. 
Looks as young as the players, I'll tell you. Jordan Griffin, I bet, gets on the court with him. Well, yeah, he's a young man. Drive. Try for the alley-oop. Loose ball squirted right back to Cam Hobbs. And now, they're going to say after it popped over to Manny, he walked. A minute and a half remaining in the first half. And I told you about one coach, the mantra for Drico. Don't be satisfied with just getting there and don't have any regrets. That's the Jaguar head coach's theory on this. Just go for it, basically. Jaguars have, have stemmed the tide a little bit here. That thing could have gotten away from them 24-16. They've reeled it back in. They've done a nice job. Now in that 2-1-2 looking zone with Canny in the middle. Got it. Cam Bryan has knocked down the three ball. 27-21 now. Just as you mentioned that, Justin. Yeah. There's nothing you could do, though. If a guy's going to be three feet behind the line and bomb away. Three from the wing. Not this time. In the air, big offensive rebound. Right hand put back up. And a foul called underneath. Good aggressive rebound from Raquel. Cam Bryant. The hand was up there from Tyler Johnson. That's just, that's just good shooting from the big fella. Six foot seven inches. They didn't do that back in our day. How did all these guys, all these tall big guys with that range, where did that come from? All the big guys when I was a kid were lumbering. Oh, my gosh. Especially when you were a kid. Yeah. Cause <laughs> you are old. Well, they didn't even have that three-point line back then. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. It's not as fun when you make it easy to pick on yourself or when you pick on yourself, right, Justin. That's, right, no, absolutely. That, that sucks out all the fun. Well, speaking of fun, it has been a very fun first half. We make our way into the final half minute. Still a 2-1-2 zone. Looks like they're putting Canny now on the low block. And Willingham in the middle. And they'll just be content with letting Dutchtown run this clock out and have at least a six-point lead, it appears. No pressure from Drico, Drico's squad. Now Bryant. Cam in the air, off glass and in. Gosh, what a beautiful move. They'll have a shot at it. Pushing forward. McIntosh is fouled. Ah, that's not a good foul. Not a good foul. You send him to the line, one second to go. Three Cam points you give away almost in that spot. Cam Bryant, 12 points in the ball game now on his fifth made field goal. Five of seven is Bryant from the field. This is Jamal McIntosh, the senior guard, who back irons the first, and that will take us to the half. Well, Cedar Shoals went on a little run there and cut into the deficit, but then Dutchtown adds some points onto their tally end of second quarter, and they'll take a 29 to 21 lead into the halftime break on the network. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety is proud to sponsor the 2020 GHSA Basketball Finals for Macon. Whether it's across town or across the country, buckle up and be safe on every trip. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Buckle up, Georgia. 
I gave a young couple a courtesy warning about an improper turn. I also told them to buckle up their seat belts, and they did. The same day I pulled up on a rollover crash, it was the same couple I had just pulled over. And they thanked me for telling them to wear their seat belts. If I can you stop them and tell them to put them seat belts on, it would have been different. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Back from the halftime break, a first half that for some was preposterous. It's a good word at times. Back alongside Justin Hanover, I'm Chris Mooney. I'm a point ball game. Dutchtown out in front of Cedar Shoals on the NFHS Network. This is the 2020 GHSA 5A Gentlemen's State Championship game. Some thoughts on first half play. Bulldogs a superior team. They really did. They, they took that eight-point lead, then a little run from the Jaguars, and they pushed them back at arm's length. It's been Jermaine Mann. It's been Cameron Bryant. They've been two absolute dominant players from the inside, from the outside. But we saw the script before. Look, any of these teams that gets down, it's not as meaningful as maybe for other teams. They've both done that. They've both reversed course. Quincy Canny can get hot. Both of these teams know how to come back in this situation, so this thing's far from over. In the 16 minutes of first half play, Cedar Shoals led for only a minute and 52 yeah. seconds. One articulation of the dominance in first half play. Dutchtown leading for the majority of the first half, quite obviously. 16-14, Dutchtown led at the end of one. And then that was a 13-7 second quarter in favor of the Bulldogs. And that's kind of bad news. You want these things going in the opposite direction if you're Cedar Shoals. And right now they got a little bit of disadvantage in some areas. Just two assists for Cedar Shoals. It's not sharing the basketball. It's good Dutchtown defense. Meanwhile, on the other end, 29 points and seven assists. Not a bad ratio. They shot almost 50% at 49%, I believe it is. And Dutchtown, it's been all Dutchtown so far for the most part. Yeah, and you read my mind. I was actually going to go to the field goal number as well because Dutchtown, part of the reason they've been able to hold on to this lead, keep Cedar Shoals at arm's length is the 48% free uh, 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 from the field from shooting the field. number that you mentioned. Cedar Shoals, conversely, just 8 of 24 from the field. Well, that will take our first break here at the half and come back with first half highlights and overall statistics from the first half of the ball game. Eight-point game on the network. Welcome aboard. We'll be pulling away in just a minute. Commute with confidence. Express can take you to work. You'll be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. More information at expressga.com. A proud supporter of high school athletics. I gave a young couple a courtesy warning about an improper turn. I also told them to buckle up their seat belts, and they did. The same day I pulled up on a rollover crash, it was the same couple I had just pulled over. And they thanked me for telling them to wear their seat belts. If I can you stop them and tell them to put them seat belts on, that would have been different. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No. Home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 70 courses, including more than 30 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. To learn more, visit the NFHS Learning Center. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player and select DVD or digital copy to get yours today.
Back for halftime here at the historic Macon Coliseum. Dutchtown 29, Cedar Shoals 21 in the 5A Boys State Championship here in 2019, uh, 2020. That's the 2019-2020 season. It all runs together. Yeah. It's our 10th year together. Yeah. Could be 2009 for all I know. Back alongside Justin Hanover, I'm Chris Mooney, and thanks for tuning in. Highlights from first half action. Some good stuff. Mainly Dutchtown, but we'll see both ends as well. You see Romy into the lane there. Jalen Anderson and then Cedar Shoals coming right back at you in your kitchen. That's a jumper. Tyler Johnson, the USC Aiken Future star. Then down low, sharing the basketball, Raquel Willingham. Jermaine Mann went for nine and seven. Some powerful work in the lane, spinning around, putting it up and in. He was four of six from the field. Then the long three, Cameron Bryant would take over. Had a couple of threes in this. We'll see the slam dunk in a minute. But Kashik Brown magic as he falls to the ground. Kick Good. out, long two, and that's put up and in. Isaiah Placid, some more of the alley-oop. The other way, Cameron Bryant, and he loves it. What a half for Bryant, a dozen points. Five of seven shooting, three rebounds. He's a terrific young man and Jermaine man. They certainly are a fearsome twosome as we look at the stats. And you see Cedar Shoals at 33% overall field goal percentage number. That's an updated number, by the way, for you, compared to the number we gave you a few moments ago. I want to give you one more in that same vein, Justin. 17%, 2 of 12 second quarter for Cedar Shoals. That's why this lead has uh, pumped up a little bit for Dutchtown. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to get it done. But again, this this game, when we're coming into this game, the way these teams have fared the last few weeks, you have to think the first half is almost to an extent meaningless. It's a dumb statement. I get it. But the way these teams come back, neither are afraid. Right. Both know they can do it. So an eight-point game for a normal team, all right, it's a deficit. For these teams, it's a minute and a half. It's magic that's about to happen that hasn't happened yet. This is, without question, a 32-minute game. Well, it could be a little bit more. <laughs> could be a could be a 36. It won't be minute. less. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly right. You know what I mean. Uh, points in the paint. Let me give you this one really quick. The rebounding edge, only one plus one for Dutchtown, yet they're making their rebounds count a little bit more, and they're, they've been a little better in the drive on the interior, 18 to 8. They lead the numbers in the paint. They're such a dangerous team inside and outside. Both teams are, but when you've got Cameron Bryant, at six foot seven, able to do what he does. We saw him step back three feet behind the line and knock it down. We saw the alley -oop put down with conviction. It's just tough to defend, bottom line. Your odd stat of the night as we wrap up our halftime show here in Macon, your odd stat of the night. Second leading rebounder in the ball game is Kashik Brown from Cedar Shoals. He has five. Jermaine Mann has seven, he's the leader. Kashik Brown's a guard, a sophomore at just five foot six. Hustle. A lot of hustle and tenacity. And that's been the story all year for both of these clubs. An eight-point game. The second half coming up on the other side of this break on the network. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. couple of courtesy warning about an improper turn. I also told them to buckle up their seat belts and they did. That same day I pulled up on a rollover crash. It was the same couple I had just pulled over. They were standing outside their car and they thanked me for telling them to wear their seat belts. As soon as we crawled out of the vehicle, it was like, wow, thank God that 
we were wearing our seat belts. Good thing you stopped him and told him to put them seat belts on. Yeah. It might have been different. The Dutchtown Bulldogs with an eight-point lead as we get ready for second half play. The men from Hampton, Georgia, just off of Jodico Road, not too far from Lake Spivey, if you know the area. 27 and four overall this year. They've won four straight, finished at 13 and one inside of Region 4, the 5A classification. Those gentlemen outscored their opponents 73-55 this year. 19 and four away from home this year. Justin, they only played eight home games. This year, wow. only eight true home games. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Scored 100-plus twice this year, did Dutchtown. Scored 100-plus twice, and then twice more had 90-plus. Without overtimes? Correct. That's they, almost impossible to beat, do in 32 minutes. They beat two teams by nearly 70 points. Yeah. Just I, an yeah, amazing right. year. They were just dominant. Meanwhile, Cedar Shoals outscored opponents 69-55 this year. They were 16-3 away from home. Also on a four-game winning streak, 28-3 overall. Finished as the number two team in Region 8 in the 5A classification. I beg your pardon, they were the regular season champs at 9-1, but they were upset by Buford in the title game of the Region Tournament, forced into a number two seed. Oh, they'll say his back heel went out of bounds. They're going to say that Quincy Canty rocked back just a tad bit too much and stepped out of bounds. They extended the zone with Jermaine Mann, and in doing so, that forced Canty backwards and into the turnover. Anderson got caught in between. He'll give it off to Callahan. Cameron then gives off to Jermaine Mann. They try for the dump down. We got a scramble. Got a timeout called, actually, and, yes, they're going to give it to him. Good job by the official to move his body position and work around a defender who was uh, kind of screening him out on the play and give the timeout to Dutchtown. They'll be down to three in the affair, I believe. Indeed. Georgia high school officials, give them credit. It's a thankless job, but these guys all year long, not only in basketball, I see it in soccer. You see the toughest job maybe in football. The Georgia high school official, phenomenal stuff out there. As you wanna, good as any state. You want to do it again? You want to send out the clarion call as we have a couple of times already since we came in here? If any of you out there yeah, love yeah. high school sports, if you love You're sports, needed. if you once were a high school player across America, and you know high school sports well, or have you ever thought about being an official, look, there is a major shortage for officials across America. Maybe you're not watching in Georgia. Maybe you're watching out in California. Doesn't matter. Almost every state in the union yeah. needs officials for their high school athletics. So give it a try. Look it up. It's a lot easier than you'd think. The process of becoming an official, I mean. You'll put in a little bit of work, but off. Oh, man, it's so, so it rewarding. Three ball. Will not fall for Canty. Dutch Town with a rebound. They Cedar Shoals missed their first two shots of the yeah, they second half. That. They need Quincy Canny to shoot him back <clears throat> into this one, or else it's a real uphill climb. You might be doing play-by-play -play here in about 15 minutes or so, Yeah, my friend. you sound great. <laughs> I sound like an old-school, raspy-voiced broadcaster. Look, it's, you know, those cigarettes back in the day. They'll, they'll get to you, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like Red Barber sitting in front of the standing mic, dragging on a heater at the table. I got a cigar in the ashtray and a heater in my hand or something. Absolutely. A minute 15 into this third quarter. It's an eight-point ball game still for Dutchtown. Same score we had at the half if you're just tuning in. Dutch really call. challenging. Yeah, they're really challenging. They're coming out on, on every pass. Jaden Williams to key it in, and he'll do so. To Jamal McIntosh. McIntosh work over to Johnson. Tyler doesn't like what he sees. He'll give off to McIntosh. Jamal gets sealed out, tries to give it back over to Johnson, and we got ourselves a kick ball. Twice in one possession. Not much penetration. Not able to really get inside. Cam Bryant clogging up the middle. 
really does look like almost a 1-1-3 type of his own. Steal. Anderson. Jalen going right to the rack, flying through the air. Kid not quite finish. He saved it for the moment, but they'll say he was standing out of bounds on baseline. He picked that ball up around the three-point line. Baseline jumper and a floater that goes. Jaden Williams breaks the scoreless drought in our second half. Williams just drawn his first tally of the night. Oh, rattled in. How about that shot from Mann? I thought that thing was going astray, but it rattled itself in. As they say, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Attack the rack. Right-handed finger roll type floater overhand for Johnson will not go. And the rebound pulled away by Mann. Jermaine will do that. Eight rebounds per ball game. And that leads his club. Took this program to another level when he came in. He nearly got himself an assist on a three ball. And nearly an 11-point lead. That's a big rattle out. Still got a long way to go, but you got to be realistic. And to break it down and get the feel of the building and the way the teams are seeming right now, it's a big moment in this ball game. It's a similar moment to the semifinal when it looked like, I, I said, Hope may be lost soon, and then Quincy Canny shot him out of it. Yeah, there's yep. there's a little double dribble. Good call on that far side. You see Mark Couch calling that. Continue your thought. Well, they just seem to be a streaky team from what I've seen, yep. where they'll go really cold, and you sort of give up hope, and then all of a sudden, Canny knocks down a couple of threes. It gets contagious, and then they're back in it. They, they need that situation at some point here, it looks like. High school sports fans, remember you never have to miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from all across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination. NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. If you become a subscriber to the network, today's uh, tonight's game would be available to you via the NFHS Network live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Just visit the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store today. Start watching live games wherever you may be. Cedar Shoals, second ever state championship game appearance. They lost to Buford at Stegman Coliseum back in 2017. That would have been such a dream season if they could have won yeah. the title at Stegman. Lost to a very good Buford club that year. Cedar Shoals, a four-time quarter finalist, a four-time semi-finalist otherwise, including the two years prior to their 2017 title game appearance. It's been a great run as of late. And they started the season, by the way, up a couple of levels with that 85-80 overtime win at Parkview, a right. place where you live near, That's right. playing the Panthers. Not too long of a drive from Athens to Lilburn. Oh, tremendous body control, a good effort. Just would not fall for Gary Richardson. Richardson yet to get into the tally sheet scoring-wise. Sealed out. Yeah, th this zone is really doing a great job for the Bulldogs. There's no penetration inside. Should have been a walk, no call. Brown. Bulldog faithful wanted that walk call a moment ago as well. Oh, tapped away from behind, but a little too much contact in doing so. Cameron Callahan has just been hit for the foul. For Callahan, that should be his first. And it is. Gary Richardson checks out. There's just no space. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to penetrate with Brian and Mann back there patrolling that lower block. Richardson went out. Hobbs comes back in. Cam Hobbs is back in the ballgame. 
Hobbs was out for a considerable stretch, if you noticed, with three fouls. So that's a big development. Nice pass down low, off glass. Oh, my! That ball went in, took yeah. a tour, grabbed a brochure and said, I'll be back in a little while, and came out. Had a little bit of lunch as well, maybe some coffee. But just a half sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have time to... Got the second half wrapped up and took it home with him. Callahan tries for the dump down. A little too rich of a pass, but it is caught eventually. Corralled on the ground by man. He whirls and lays it up and in. What soft hands, though. Able to just bring that ball yes. in with ease. He made that look a lot easier than it was. Ten-point game. Oh, attack. Up and in. Jordavian Colbert. Well, Sophomore, 5'8", guard, 171. Last two possessions, they did get inside. The old scratchy voice is contagious here in Macon. You're welcome, Justin. A little too close to each other. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we are. Uh, Bryant. Cam going to decide to back it up a little bit. It's a great matchup between Bryant and Johnson. Man alive. This is man... And man, rejected but fouled at close range. I'll tell you, Johnson with Bryant and man with Canty. Those two matchups, good gracious, so good. Uh, Canty hit with a foul by, uh, right there, by the way. No, no, wait a minute now. Have they updated the big board because they've got 23? They hit Raquel Willingham on the foul? Yes, I suppose they did. I stand corrected. I beg your pardon, that'll be the second on Willingham. I must say, I did not see Raquel near the play. Curious. Well, Raquel will head over to the bench. Thirty-five twenty-five. Dutchtown with a 10-point lead. I know I said it a few moments ago, but it's a pivotal moment in the ball game. Dangerous time for Cedar Shoals. Just 10 makes. Just 10 makes on the offensive end, and Dutchtown gets inside like that. Callahan, Cameron Callahan, who's 42% from the field this year, the junior at 5'10" has just given Dutchtown a 12-point lead at 37-25. And everybody in that dog's huddle, you can see them looking at each other, big smiles, high fives, pats all around. They're feeling themselves right now. It's almost too easy the way man penetrated. Then he kicked it out to Callahan inside, and he put up the uncontested layup. And they're loving it. For Callahan... Got four points in 16 minutes. He actually leads Dutchtown in steals tonight with two. He's also contributed a rebound and an assist. And those faithful there hoping that tonight could be the end of a dream season south of the city. These guys see themselves on the big board. Hey, nice sweatshirt, kid. The French sweatshirt. Do you even know what Friends is? This much, I, I, I know. It's, that's what's so amazing about it. Show went off the air 15 years ago, and it's still the most watched television show in syndicated history. You know what? Never mind. I'll spare you my vast knowledge on Friends. I'll use your day. line here, but you digress. Indeed. You know they're having a little reunion show. I'll tell you about it afterwards. Fair enough. Let's finish up the state championship. Then we'll talk a little friends later. Cedar Shoals needs it. Oh, my goodness. Got to be the fourth time tonight that a ball has went in and come right out when it absolutely looked like it was going to fall. May not seem like a big deal, but you think about it. You give them two of those, and even the four points make a difference. Certainly all four of them would make a difference. Hobbs. Going to drive in. Throw up a floater that's off iron, no good. Going through hands, ends up a three ball that's off back iron for Cam Bryant. Here comes Brown. Give off. Canty. 
right hand and in. Maybe that'll get him going. A little run out, an easy bucket. Maybe that'll start a rhythm. With that said, the quarter's almost over. Yep. And Dutch Town may hold for the last shot. I would, would you? I would, but nobody seems to anymore, so. <laughs> that is a true and factual statement. That last bucket for Canty, by the way, just his third make of the ball game. He's three of 10 from the field, got nine points. Now they're gonna hit Cedar Shoals on a foul. Cam Hobbs coming with the inbounds at 24.3. Bryant. Off to man. Bryant been a last second shot. Extraordinaire. Instead, he'll give it off. And that one's off iron. No good. Still got a shot at it. If you're Brown and Cedar Schultz, he shot it a little bit too early. He still had a oh, good five steps the way he was streaking down the court. But one way or another, he comes up empty on that last second shot. It'll be a 10-point ball game to the fourth quarter on the NFHS Network. Welcome aboard. We'll be pulling away in just a minute. Commute with confidence. Express can take you to work. You'll be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. More information at expressga.com. A proud supporter of high school athletics. Football Fridays in Georgia returns this fall on GPB. If you don't want to be stuck on the sidelines, download the GPB Sports app today. Keep up to date with your favorite teams, get the latest news, and so much more. Download the free GPB Sports app from Apple and Android stores now. Who's the best boy? Want to watch some TV? Look, your favorite. You know, your dog doesn't really care if the TV is on. When you think about it, saving energy means saving money. That's why Georgia Power has tips, tools, and rebates to help you be more efficient. For smart, easy ways to save money and energy, visit georgiapower.com. The start of the fourth quarter, where dreams come true in Macon. It's Dutchtown 37, Cedar Shoals 27. The final stands of the 2020 GHSA 5A Basketball State Championship on the boys' side. Alongside Justin Hanover, I'm Chris Mooneyham. Thanks for joining us as we're now potentially, anyway, eight minutes away from wrapping up day three of the GHSA Basketball State Championships. Or 12 or 16 or maybe even 20. Indeed, a three ball from the corner. Side iron, no good. Big defensive rebound for Cedar Shoals. Spin move. A little out of control. Brown going to give it off to Canty. Canty on baseline, falling away and draws it. Canty now to double figures. He'll be at 11 in the ball game. Four of 11 from the field. Kashik passed up a three. I thought he was going to take that. It was an open look. Oh, my. Explosion to the bucket for Cam Hobbs. See if he was, well, we didn't get to see him actually pass up the shot, but the assist is... Quincy Canny does his thing, and like you said, now up to 11. Cam Hobbs has just dropped home his first point of the evening. Missed a lot of time in the ball game. Picked up his third foul early in the affair. He's 0 for 4 from the field. Missed a couple of three-pointers. Now 2 for 2 from the line. Two points in the ball game, as I just mentioned. Three rebounds, two assists in 17 minutes worth of play. Oh, great streaking, cutting to the bucket. Oh, left it a little strong off the bucket, or off the backboard for Johnson. Now look at Hobbs. Rebound, plus seed. 12 point game, steal. Up, no good. That, that would have been, been. Yeah, that could have been a yep. dagger of sorts. Yep. That sounds a well-oiled machine right now. The zone is tough to solve. They're doing it on the offensive end. No good for Jordavian Colbert. Send ahead to Bryant. May have been fouled. Got back in bounds. Scooped up the loose ball and dropped it in. Dutchtown trying to run away to the title. The Cedar Shoals have a little more magic in them. You've seen it all season long.
Colbert to Johnson, a three. They need it. Offside iron, no good. Comes streaking in. Swipe it out of midair. Jaden Williams took it right out of the hands. I mean, that ball was headed directly to a touchdown player. He came flying in and took it and went right to the rack. Look, when you're aggressive, good things happen. Was that a little bit lucky that it came right to him? Sure it was. But when you go for those rebounds, the ball will find you if you do the right thing. So well done on that exchange as we see. Only the rim can stop Cameron Bryant. And then the tenacity puts it up and in. Then the other way. Flying in, putting it up and in, the senior and Jaden Williams. Down 12, under six to go. Dare I say, Cedar Shoals has them just where they want them. <laughs> Fans, don't forget you can purchase a DVD keepsake copy of today's event by clicking on the blue Get the DVD button directly under your video event player or click on the Buy a DVD button on the top right-hand corner of the network website. You can also click on the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. You know Dutchtown will be deliberate now offensively. But still five and a half minutes to play. Oh, rejection, close range. Jordavian Colbert says, not this time, Isaiah. Smallest man on the floor there, Jay Colbert with the block. You see the 2-3 zone. Well, now it looks like they're mad, as they should be this late down by what they are. Mismatch down Turn below. Around. Indeed. Put back. No good. And a whistle has blown the play dead. Yeah, they can't have that. They can't have Jaden Williams guarding Jermaine Mann. It's just not going to be fruitful in the end. 5'10 against a 6'5 man who plays more like he's 6'7", 6'8". I think down on the Cedar Shoals end, that's why you've got Coach Thomas right now asking. As you see again, look at that mismatch. Great job, yeah. Ben and Stefan in the truck. You just can't survive that matchup. Nothing to do. It's not Williams' fault. He's just giving too much there. 45 31. The most dangerous moment of the season for Cedar Shoals. Do they have a great historic type run in them? Teams do not usually come back in the title game here in Macon from a deficit like this, I'll tell you that. And the rebound pulled away by Dutchtown. Dogs looking for that killer instinct. The send ahead. He caught it, but he flew out of bounds. Oh, wow. They're going to call the foul on Brown. Inbounds under the bucket. Dutchtown will keep it. For Brown, it's his first. No reason to take any shot. That's not a great percentage shot. Well, speaking about great percentage shot. 47-31. Dutchtown might be on the way now. For Bryant, he's now on 16 points, 7 of 12 from the field. I mean, we're going to have a dunk contest tomorrow. I'll take my chances with that man if he was up against anybody. You know, that's right. Wonder if he put in an entry. He had bigger fish to fry. Yeah, indeed. Three ball. Off the iron, and it rolls out to Dutchtown. Nearing the midway point of the quarter, drive right to an empty lane. Cedar Shoals got a little lucky on that one. Off glass and in. Great end-to-end -end work by Tyler Johnson to get the deuce. Johnson now to six points in the ball game. He's on four fouls, by the way. Tyler, after that legendary shot in the semifinal, just two of 11 from the field here tonight. 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, uncontested. You wonder if that was an effort of spirit. Things going the way of the Bulldog tonight. Colbert. Going to drive and dish. Now got another drive in the lane, and the floater is good for Kashik Brown. Brown will collect his third and fourth points of the ball game. You know, Brown has eight rebounds in this ball game, by the way. Still leads Dutchtown. Second leading rebounder in the ball game. Loose. Here he is again, his ninth rebound. Kashik is fouled. I mean, Dutchtown's got to be a little bit smarter. Just slow the ball down there. There's no reason to take a shot for the rest of this game, to be honest. <laughs> Let's take a look again with a vengeance. Pounding the rim. Look at this from the top view. Shaking. I think that rim must have done something. Yeah, that's too. rim rocking yeah. right there. Yeah, he owed that rim something. He did. They've got some history. Brown knocks down the free throw. Man and Bryant, 33 of the 47. What a dynamic duo they've been. So that'll chip away at the lead, it's 12. Cedar Shoals got to go on a big time shooting scoring run. Which would be out of character for the ball game so far. They've struggled from the field. Brown saved it, up, in. It's not over yet. Williams on the bucket, Jaden Williams. 10 point game. Man gets it to Bryant, they get it over the half court stripe. Smart play by Cam Bryant. Saw he had a man underneath, wasn't 100% certainty to get it there. Very smart play to hold it out. 2.20 remaining. No shot clock in Georgia High School basketball. You want to give us your thoughts on that now? <laughs> even you kidding about it gets me a little heated. The blood's boiling a little, I huh? just, I can't even, I'm not, I can't even. Jalen Anderson, six and a half points per ball game, three assists, transferred into the program from Forest Park. One for two trip. 11 point ball game, Colbert. Need a perfect final two minutes. Canty hits. It's a good start. Regent Player of the Year comes through when his team needs him the most. 2.03 remaining. Eight point ball game. Eight fouls, six fouls, I beg your pardon, have been committed by Cedar Shoals if it matters. And it will when, once they want to start fouling to send Dutchtown to the line to try to catch up. Just four fouls committed by Dutchtown. Don't suppose that matters. One timeout remain, remaining for Cedar Shoals. Two timeouts remaining for Dutchtown. And Take now our key player yeah. comparison. Yeah. Jermaine Mann's had the best of them. Can he scored some points here of late? But it's been all about Jermaine Mann. His 17 and 11. He's been the last two games 23 and a half and 13. So he continues that run. Quincy Canny needs to absolutely catch fire in this final 203 and get his team back in this thing. You mentioned, by the way, Forest Park. They'll be representing here tomorrow, won't they? Against Glen Academy. It's going to be a great final. The ladies' championship? Is Unless, that right? Um, I believe so, yeah. Is it? Well, I know they have the Gatorade Player of the Year. Yep. That game will tip off at 1 p.m. There are a couple of bigs on each side that's going to be a monster battle down low. It'll be 1 p.m. tip-off time, Eastern time, on the network. Been a little while since Forest Park has reached a state championship game. Matter of fact, you and I probably called the last one years and years ago. 
Big step and a foul. That could be it. Jermaine Mann's got a little Chris Bosch look to him, does he not? You get a good look at him here? A little Chris Bosch. Yeah, I can see that. Now if he has half the career that Bosch had. Legendary Georgia Tech player. Lucky. For a year. Legendary. Oh, he was great. Well, he was great, but I don't know if one year can make you legendary. Three-point play, an 11-point lead. One and a half remaining. Right to the rack. That one's no good. Big offensive board. And now a steal. A steal for Dutchtown. Bryant has it in his hands. It almost feels academic now. Are they not fouling? Well, a lot of the seconds white flag are must be yeah. out. No fouls. Cedar Shoals, it looks like they're going to let Dutchtown run it out. What a dream. What a season. The continued emergence of athletic championship caliber programs on the south side of Atlanta. The sprawling Atlanta Metroplex, of course. Dutchtown out of Hampton, down off of Jodico. Cam Hobbs. Three points in the ball game. All three from the line. Just nope. a very, very complete effort. Very well-rounded team. Came out, professional effort. Clearly the better team. A couple of superstars leading the way in Mann and Bryant. And they're 41 seconds away from the Holy Grail. Again, don't forget to join us tomorrow for the final day of the 2020 GHSA Basketball State Championships. We'll start our day with the 6A girls and then guys. Glenn Academy will take on Forest Park. And then a really surprising matchup on the guy side of the championships. Chattahoochee will take on Lanier. Lanier winning an absolute classic. Yeah, what a comeback. In the semifinals. Oh, boy, down a bunch to Kell late. Then we'll have the newly christened slam dunk championship coming up at about 445 tomorrow. Justin and I will be back on hand for that. The slam dunk final. Looking forward to that. The first time ever. Then at 530, we'll start with the 7A classification. It'll be the ladies' side, Westlake and Collins Hill, two Blue Bloods. Westlake going for their third consecutive title. Collins Hill will be looking for championship overall number, I don't know, 70, something like that. By the way, I said, then, I said pardon me, I said Kelly, I meant South Cop. Oh, and then we'll get Wheeler and Grayson in the 7A championship. Grayson got a chance to win not just a state title, which would be their first, but also a national title. Back-to-back -back for the state of Georgia. I mean, it was McEachern be. considered last year. I guess it they were. Be. One publication did name McEachern as a national titleist last year. Grayson got a chance to do that. Exclamation point. Indeed. Because Dutchtown, they're not worried about any other classifications. All they know is that this dream season that they've had unfold before their eyes in Hampton has now ended in a state title. Dutchtown wins the 2020. 5A GHSA State Championship. Man and Bryant combined for 38 points and 16 rebounds. The big fellas coming through, and what a complete effort by the Dutchtown Bulldogs. A 13-point win when we come back. The trophy presentation next on the network.
This was a 16 to 14 ball game at the end of one. Dutchtown had the lead. They pushed their lead up to 24 to 16 immediately following that into the second quarter. Cedar Shoals went on a run and drew back within striking distance of Dutchtown. That really for all intents and purposes was as close as they would get. Cedar Shoals, I mean. 29-21 at the half, 37-27 at the end of three, and then of course the 13 point victory. For Cedar Shoals, it'll end their four game winning streak. They'll finish their year at 28 and four overall. But what a year. Real good team, real good season. What an amazing semifinal. What a, what a whirlwind they were on. They came one step short. Congratulations, Coach Thomas and the Jaguars. Nothing to hold your heads down about. They'll be a state runner up for the second time in four seasons. But those gentlemen, now Dutchtown will end the season on a five game winning streak. They'll finish their year at 28 and four overall. Jordan Griffin in his first year as a high school head coach. It's easy, it's just an easy gig. He was a JV coach at one time and he's been a head coach of an AAU team for two years. Anybody can do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't mean that in a disparaging way. I mean, it's a remarkable sure. story. What a great story. Coach Griffin and his Dutchtown Bulldogs are the state champions in 2020. For Brandon Mincy, Ian Russell, Ben Halpern, Stefan Lawler, and even for Justin Hanover. I'm Chris Mooneyham. Thanks for joining us, everybody. It's a 57-44 Dutchtown win in the 2020 GHSA 5A Boys State Championship game. And you watch it all unfold live right here on the NFHS Network.